There are few computers more iconic than the venerable Mac Plus. Affordable, accessible, and unintimidating, it fixed many of the limitations of that original Macintosh. Except for processor speed. Thankfully, third parties stepped in with accelerators to solve that as well. Such as Micromac, whose performer promised to bring your Plus up to speed with the most powerful compact Mac, the SE30. Yeah. For a fraction of the price. So today, we're gonna hot rod the very first computer ever shown on the Action Retro channel and see if it can compare with this upgrade to a real SE30 and hopefully not destroy it. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy messing with multiple mass market machines from the early days of the Macintosh, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We borderline torture a lot of classic Macs around here, so it's definitely worth sticking around. The good old Mac Plus certainly wasn't the fastest computer you could buy in 1986, but for many, it was the best computer they could buy. At just $25.99, about $6,500 today, this Plus promised a simple, friendly setup and experience right out of the box. Compare that with trying to cobble together a 386 DOS machine. A one megabyte Compact Desk Pro 386 could run $6,500 for the base computer itself, and that's without monitor or video card. Those things would cost you hundreds of dollars more, and such a system would take up two outlets with a rat's nest of cords in the back. But the good old Mac Plus was one cord in one outlet with one keyboard and mouse in the box, monitor built in, good to go. Granted, it had its limitations, especially in that it was pretty slow. That famous friendly user interface was powered by an eight megahertz, barely, 68,000 and one meg of memory. Thankfully, upgradable to four. Apple continued to release newer and faster compact Macs through the late 80s. The Macintosh SE in 1987, with faster SCSI and an optional built-in hard drive, and the SE30 in 1989, with way faster 68030 processor at 16 megahertz and support for a ludicrous 128 megs of RAM. But all the while, Apple kept selling the good old Mac Plus all the way up till 1990. That price point and simplicity kept old reliable here really attractive, especially to the education market. Spicing things up a bit was the burgeoning upgrade scene. Macintosh upgrades and accelerators really exploded <laughs> through the late 90s and into the early 2000s. Figuratively, not literally. Mostly. But the genesis of these things was right here. Clever accelerators for compact Macs that were never meant to be tinkered with. I've been looking for an O30 accelerator for my Mac Plus since before the beginning of this channel. And here it is, the MicroMac Performer 68030 with FPU. Can you believe that MicroMac was selling these for $149? with the promise of matching a SE30, which was $4,400. Well, we'll just see about that in a minute here. Now, I purchased this from a very nice member of the Vintage Mac groups on that blue social media site that cloned Friendster, and uh, it's quite cool, and also a bit unusual. Here, let's take a closer look. Right after a quick word about our sponsor, PCBWay. And another reminder that it's the fifth annual PCBWay PCB Design Contest. Through the 31st of December, 2022, submit your project for a chance to win a bunch of cool prizes. And even better, the participation prize is a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is pretty much impossible to find these days. Feel free to design a 68040 accelerator that would fit my Mac Plus. So check out the link in my description below for the fifth annual PCBWay design contest. And if you have any PCB or prototyping needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. So here is the MicroMac Performer. And this came out of a working system, so I'm super excited to try this out. And uh, yeah, they made several versions of this card. You could see the 
PL is crossed out here, meaning this is for the Plus. They also made it for the Macintosh Classic and the Mac SE, which were other 6800 based machines. Now I posted this up on the Tinker Different forums for some opinions on how cool it is. And uh, yeah, it turns out this is a pretty interesting version because there is no PDS connector to put this in a Mac SE and there is a Killy clip on it, which a lot of these didn't actually have the Killy clip and would replace a socketed processor. But this is meant to clip over top of a soldered on 68,000 processor and piggyback the 68030 board on top of it. So yeah, that's super cool. Now, back in the day, it would have been very difficult to verify Micromax claims of SE30-like performance out of your Mac Plus. And uh, I'm a little suspicious of that claim for a couple reasons that we'll get into later. But for now, I wanna test it using a little bit of modern Macintosh magic, the venerable Blue SCSI. In fact, this is an external Blue SCSI with a DB25 connector. So we can plug this into the back of both of these machines and boot from it like a real SCSI hard drive. And I have an image on here with a fresh install of macOS 7.1, which is a perfectly reasonable operating system for the SE30. And uh, yeah, kind of a ridiculous thing to run on a stock Mac Plus. We'll run some benchmarks with MacBench 2.0 before and after the upgrade and see how this really compares to an SE30. All right, so our green blue SCSI plugs right into the SCSI port on the back of our SE30 here, and let's boot from it and run some benchmarks. All right, and now we'll boot the plus from the same disc. Well, as is probably a surprise to no one, the stock Mac Plus is much slower than an SE30. With the 8 megahertz 68,000 in this thing, running at about 21% the speed of the 16 megahertz 68030 in the SE30. Additionally, disk speed is much slower in the Mac Plus because the SCSI bus runs much slower in the stock Mac Plus. Now, they did later make extensions, well, third-party extensions, to speed up and fix some bugs in the slow Mac Plus SCSI implementation, but we're not running those here, at least not yet. All right, let's tear into this Mac Plus and do this upgrade. And here is our Mac Plus motherboard with four megs of RAM and the corresponding settings resistor clipped off, one of the first board level modifications I ever made. And this big chip right here, that's our 68,000 processor. And as you can see, there is no socket, it's soldered directly to the motherboard. So Micromac did not expect you to have to desolder this processor, which even for someone with a equipment and experience is gonna be kind of a pain, instead it kind of cheats. And the Killy clip just clips over the pins of the processor and usurps its connection. <laughs> so I'm just gonna clean off the pins of the processor with a bit of isopropyl alcohol to make sure we have a good connection. And uh, <laughs> we'll do this very simple, hopefully, install. Oh yeah, good thing I cleaned it. That's dirty. Okay, now on the side of the Killy clip here, there are two little clips. So this should snap into place around the processor, which is gonna be kind of terrifying because old plastics and all. All right, that's a, that's really a tight fit and does take some working back and forth to get on there. But when it goes on, it is all the way down and the edges are pretty much flush with the PCB underneath. So yeah, I think that's a successful install. All right, sliding Z board into Z auto, I mean, 
the computer. <laughs> Put on the old finger slicer. And we're ready to test this thing. Oh, I almost forgot software. Yeah, although I didn't say I was Action Retro when I bought this thing, uh, the seller figured it out afterwards. And in addition to including all the good software for this, they included uh, some pretty fun stickers and a coaster and a very nice note. So thank you so much, Tim. Amazing. But let's install some of this software and uh, kind of wondering if I should have done this first. And I'm also wondering if the floppy drive in the Mac even works. Let's find out. All right, powering up. No chime. And garbage. Excellent. Okay, so the card came unseated when I put this in there. So this time, using the specialized tool of a Magic the Gathering Rules reference sheet to push down on the card without destroying my hands on the solder joints. The card is now fully snapped in. Hey! We got a bong. Alright, we are successfully booted back into the blue SCSI drive. Let's see if these discs work. Nice. All right, let's install everything there is to install. Now with the upgrade, I am worried about heat inside the case here because the Mac Plus famously does not have a fan. Thank you, Steve Jobs. So I'm going to solder a fan connector onto 12 volts and ground here on the power connector so we can stick some sort of a fan in here. Maybe something like that, or maybe something like that. I don't know, we'll see. There we go, might as well be stock. Awesome. <laughs> Even awesomer. Look at that. Where would that even go? Okay, so for now, I have the Noctua mostly secured right here. I'll probably have to 3D print something to make it a little stronger, but it's not going anywhere. And I have it facing down, so hopefully the air will draw in from the vent on this side come down and across the processor and back up and out the other vent. So let's put this thing back together, turn it on and run those benchmarks. Well, the fan in there is a little bit louder than I had hoped. Surprising for a Noctua. But maybe if we 3D print something to reduce the vibrations, that'll be a little better. Anyway. Let's run our benchmarks. Interesting that system info says we're running a 6820 at five megahertz. I don't think that's accurate. Haha, -ha, well, problems. Let me run you through them. First of all, I found out there is actually an extension that we need in order to run this at 68030. And uh, yeah, we were seeing 6020 before. Haha, <laughs> airtight num number seven, my favorite. So, as I said, problems. But I don't think the problems necessarily have to do with the accelerator itself because as you saw that error message there, watch this. I'm gonna boot off of the startup diskette, which is system seven one, I think but it includes the correct extension and init file. And watch this. Here's the extension loading and look, <laughs> that hilarious little animated race car. That's the extension for the accelerator. And that's adorable, by the way. <laughs> well, look at this. 
rebooted just fine. Ah, well, this is System 6, but still. Yeah, booted just fine. No errors. No actual software, but, uh... Yeah, let's see what the system says. We'll pop in the utilities disk. Do a little floppy swapping. And check it out, speedometer shows our 68030 CPU, 6 2 FPU, and our 4 megs of RAM. This is working just fine. So, what I think I'm gonna do is a completely fresh install of System 7.1 on here, and see if that makes a difference, starting with the init's on there, and uh, hold please. Alright, booting off the new install of 7.1. Looking promising. Oh no. I don't know, maybe the accelerator just doesn't like the blue SCSI. Let's try again off the floppy disk and see if we can access the blue SCSI contents. Huh, well, booted off the floppy and it doesn't like that blue SCSI image, I guess. Okay, this time system 712 from a different image, the Mac pack on archive.org. And I've added the init file for the accelerator to it. There it is. Oh my God, is it working? Oh, I think it's working. You rebuild that desktop file. Okay, it froze and made some cursed noises. All right, well, apparently it doesn't like my RAS SCSI either. How about a floppy emu? Well, guess freaking what? Guess what disk image it liked on the floppy emu? Gruzz's System 7.1 Flappy Mac disk. <laughs> so this is a four megabyte disk and I'm gonna try to put the inits in here. Let's see if we can restart with accelerated Flappy Mac. <laughs> All right, it's booting. There's disk access. Read state changed, 2K. What the heck does that mean? Don't you just love it when absolutely everything goes right and according to plan, nothing goes wrong. It's perfect, flawless, without a hitch. Well, I hate that, which is why I'm so happy that this went completely wrong. Well, not completely wrong. I mean, this is a 68030 based Mac Plus now, and it's booted with the extension into 68030 mode. <laughs> it's just extremely finicky. And I've done some research online, and that was one of the big complaints with this particular rather inexpensive upgrade. It could be unreliable. People will get random crashes playing games or running software and uh, yeah, it seems that <laughs> it does not like things like a blue SCSI. But I'm not giving up just yet because I do want to make this the ultimate internet enabled Mac Plus. And to that end, I want to try a couple of things. First, I have the Rominator for Mac Plus and actually Mac 512 and 128K as well. And uh, yeah, I want to install this thing in there and see if it'll boot from this. And uh, I also want to find my STM so I can reflash the blue SCSI with the latest firmware. And yeah, I still have high hopes for this thing, so make sure you stay tuned. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Dwight A. Spencer, Greg from Rutk Mods, Paul Spencer, Ryan, 
Scott Thompson and Sutek, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.